All right, kiddos, welcome back. We're going to continue with our discussion of Le Chatelier's principle, and uh, we'll work through several examples. At the end of the video, I'll do a couple of demonstrations for you to hopefully illustrate this a bit better for you. So, let's take this reaction here where carbon monoxide reacts with hydrogen gas to produce methane and water vapor. And let's do a few things by changing the amount of reactant and product we have. Let's first write the equilibrium expression for this reaction. Would you agree that KEQ would be equal to, looks like we have methane, CH4 concentration on top, and water vapor. And we would have carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas, and that would be, of course, cubed on the bottom. So remember, this equilibrium constant will not change so long as we mess with the temperature. So if we add a reactant, so take a look at example number one here. We're going to add a reactant. In this case, it's carbon monoxide. If the carbon monoxide concentration gets bigger and this equilibrium constant can't change, what has to happen? Well, if the CO gets bigger, it seems like the H2 concentration would have to get smaller. And the water vapor and methane concentration would have to increase to compensate for that increase of CO. Now, if we just look at it practically, if we add something on this side, obviously that's a stress on the system. And we need to get rid of it. And so the best way to get rid of it is to make product out of it. And so when we make product out of it, we would call that a shift to the right. So that's what this means, equilibrium shifts to the right. Now, another way we can shift the equilibrium to the right is if we remove product. So take a look at our equilibrium expression again. This time we're looking at water vapor. If I get rid of water vapor, if this number here on top gets smaller, what has to happen in order for this equilibrium constant to not change? Well, the methane would have to get bigger. And for that to happen, the carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas would have to get smaller. So let's think about it just practically. If we remove water vapor, that's placing a stress on this happy little equilibrium system. So how are we going to reestablish that? Well, we're going to want to make more water vapor. So we're going to shift to the right to make more water vapor. Now when that happens, doesn't that mean that more methane is made and that I reduce the amount of CO and hydrogen gas? Yeah, that's what that means. Now we can also shift the equilibrium to the other side. We call that a shift to the reactant side or a shift to the left. So if we take a look at uh, scenario number three, if I remove carbon monoxide, that places a stress on the system, so we want to replace that. Well, how do we replace the carbon dioxide that we've removed? Well, that means that my products here have to turn into reactants. So I would make more CO from my products. So we would call that a shift left. Now, of course, that would mean more H2 is made as well. Alrighty, another way we could shift it left is by adding product. So I'm adding a gaseous product here. I need to get rid of it. That's a stress on the system. So how do I consume this water vapor that I've just added? Well, it needs to shift towards the left to make more of those reactants, to get rid of that H, extra H2O that I've added. So that would mean the methane concentration would go down and that these concentrations would go up. Once again, they'd all do it proportionally so that this equilibrium constant number does not change. Now, we can also shift right or left um, by changing the temperature. Now, of course, when I change the temperature, remember, the equilibrium constant will change as well. That's the only thing that will change the value of KEQ. So if we take a look at an exothermic reaction. An exothermic reaction, we have heat being produced. So remember, we, we've symbolized this with the triangle H or delta H symbol, or we can think of it as a fireplace. So if I raise the temperature, if I make this hotter, 
want to get away from the heat. So if you remember the little girl, and we've always used the little girl and she's either hot or cold, right? So in this case, we're raising the temperature. It's getting hot. So is she going to go towards the heat or away from the heat? That's right. She is going to go away from the heat when it gets hot. So if I raise the temperature on an exothermic reaction, the equilibrium will shift to the left. Okay, how can we shift it to the right? Well, let's lower the temperature this time. So here's the little girl, and let's see. Now, that's a horrible picture of a little girl, but you guys get the idea. If we make it cold, right, by lowering the temperature, isn't she going to shift towards the heat? So in an exothermic reaction, if we lower the temperature, it will shift to the right. What about endothermic reactions? So in endothermic reactions, heat, delta H, is on the reactant side. So if we raise the temperature for endothermic reactions, here's our little girl again. Right? If we make it hot, she's going to go away from the heat, so she will go to the right. And then finally, if we have an endothermic reaction and we lower the temperature, she's going to want to go towards the heat, so that would shift her towards the left, or the reaction towards the left. I hope that little analogy helps you guys out when we change temperature, and you know if it's an exothermic or endothermic reaction. So let's try this problem here, example number eight. How would each of the following changes affect the equilibrium position if the system used to produce methanol, or in the, uh, in the system used to produce methanol from carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So let's write the equilibrium expression here. We have methanol on top, CH3OH concentration, and carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas in my denominator, and the H2 is squared. So let's go ahead and add CO to the system. So if we're adding CO to this system, that's placing a stress on it. We have excess CO. We need to use it up. So how are we going to use up a reactant? That's right. It will shift to the right, and we'll end up producing more methanol. What if we cool the system? All right, you'll notice this is an exothermic reaction. So if we cool the system, if we make it cold, we're going to shift in a direction where there is heat, and that's on the right-hand side again. So this is another one that will shift it right. How about adding a catalyst to the system? That's right. If you remember, a catalyst will speed up a reaction by lowering the activation energy, but it will not shift the equilibrium. So there's no shift when a catalyst is added. How about if we remove methanol from the system? So we're going to remove product. That's placing a stress on the system, isn't it? We want to replace what we just removed. That's right. It's on the right-hand side, so this would be another shift to the right. And then finally on this problem, what if we decreased the volume of the system? So decreasing the volume is also the same as saying increasing the pressure. Right? If you make the volume get smaller and smaller and smaller, those gaseous particles get closer and closer to each other, and so the pressure is going to build up. So decreasing the volume is just like increasing the pressure. So if you recall, when we increase the pressure or decrease the volume, we will relieve the stress by going to the side where there are fewer moles of gas. So if you take a look at the reactant side, I have a carbon monoxide and two hydrogen gases, so three gases on the reactant side or left side. On the product side, I just have one gas. So if I increase the volume or increase the pressure by decreasing the volume, that will go to the side where there's less gas, and in this case, that is also to the right. Alrighty? Alright, let's see if you can do one by yourself. So take a look at example 9. We have ethylene reacting with hydrogen to form ethane. Here's your reaction. Looks like it's exothermic again. How would you regulate the temperature in order to accomplish each of the following? So go ahead and try A, B, and C without my help. Then return to the video. We'll see how you did. See you in a second. All right, welcome back. 
So letter A, we want to increase the yield or the amount of ethane. Doesn't that mean we want to shift it right? True story, because my ethane is on the right-hand side, that's C2H6. So we want to regulate the temperature to shift it to the right. Looks like heat's on the right-hand side, right? So here's our little girl again, right? We want her to move to the right. We want her to go this way. So how are we going to do that? To get her to go towards the heat? That's right. We will decrease the temperature. We'll make it get colder. When we make it get colder, she'll to shift towards the heat, and in this case, that's on the right-hand side. How about if we want to decrease the concentration of ethylene? So we want the C2H4, ethylene kiddos is C2H4, we want to decrease that amount. How do we decrease that? Yeah, we want to use it up. So doesn't that mean we want to shift it right again? Well, we just learned a second ago in an exothermic reaction, if you want to shift it to the right, you will decrease the temperature. All right, and finally, letter C, we want to increase the amount of hydrogen. So hydrogen kiddos is on the left side. It's right over there, and we want to get more of it. So we want to shift it towards the left. Okay, let's erase this little arrow here for the little girl. So now we want to shift it away from the heat, don't we? That's right. So we want to shift it left to get more hydrogen, don't we? So how do we shift it left? We want the little girl to go this way, so we're going to make it hot, aren't we? We're going to increase the temperature so she goes away from the heat. So if you said increase temp on letter C, you did it correctly. Alrighty? Now, I've got a short video to show you related to um, equilibrium shifts. I'm going to show you two different demonstrations. Hopefully, that will clear this up for any of you that might be confused. So, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about equilibrium and the Chatier's principle. Now, the Chatier's principle states the following. When a stress is placed upon a system in equilibrium, the system will shift in such a way as to relieve the stress. I have two quick demos set up that I hope will illustrate this to you. The first one involves a colorless gas, N2O4, at equilibrium with a brown gas, NO2. Now, both of these tubes are at equilibrium at different temperatures. This is in cold water, and we can see that the brown intensity is much less intense than the one in hot water. Now I'm going to switch these. I'm going to put the one that wasn't cold in the hot water and the one that was hot in the cold water. And there's a stress being placed upon both of these. In one instance, the temperature is dropping. The other instance, the temperature is increasing. And we're going to find out how the equilibrium shifts when temperature is changed. Now let's suppose that this reaction is exothermic. I'm not saying that it is. We're supposing it is. If it were exothermic, and I increased the temperature, I made it hotter, that means that this equilibrium would shift to the left to get away from this heat. And when I made it hotter, I would expect it to go colorless. Hmm, is that what happened? When I made it hotter, did it get colorless? Seems like the intensity of the brown's increasing, doesn't it? And when it got colder, the intensity of the brown is decreasing. So if this were an exothermic reaction, heat's on the right, and I increased the temperature, I would expect it to shift left when I increase the temperature and it become more colorless, which it is not. So, perhaps this reaction is endothermic, and heat is on the left-hand side of the equation. Let's see. If I were to heat this reaction up, the stress, of course, would be an increase in heat, and this system would shift once again to move itself away from the heat, which would be to the right this time, and it would become more brown. So when I heated it up, I would expect it to go right, if it were exothermic, excuse me, endothermic. And sure enough, it does. It becomes a more intense brown. Likewise, if I cooled it down, it would shift to go towards the heat, and it would become more colorless. And that's exactly what happened. Let me put these next to each other again. You can see the one that was colder became less intense. That means it shifted to the N2O4 side to go towards the heat. The one that was hot shifted towards the NO2 side. It became a darker brown, so it shifted away from the heat, and that's exactly what we saw.
Okay, the next quick demo, let's put this away, is between the chromate and the dichromate ion. Let me turn my stirrer on. Let's try stirring it, there we go. And the chromate ion is a yellow color. The dichromate ion is an orange color. And right now it's at equilibrium. I'm not going to mess with the temperature this time. This time I'm going to change the pH. I'm going to be adding acid and base. And I'm going to see which direction this equilibrium shifts when I add an acid or base to it. So this reaction happens to be um, an acidic reaction where H pluses or protons are on the left-hand side of the equation. If that's true, when I add an acid to this system at equilibrium, when I shift to the right to move away from the acid, and this should turn orange. So I have some one molar hydrochloric acid here. We'll add some acid, and we'll see if this shifts to the right and forms the orange dichromate. And sure enough, that's exactly what we see. When I added acid, we shifted to the right to move away from the acid, and we form the dichromate ion. Now, what would happen if I removed H pluses? How can you take away H pluses from a reaction? Well, if I add a base to this, if I add hydroxides to this, won't that, in effect, remove protons out of this reaction because they'll react with the OH minuses to form water? And if I remove H pluses, it should shift left to replace those and it should turn yellow. So I have some one molar sodium hydroxide. We'll add this to the system at equilibrium and we hope to see it turn yellow. And sure enough, it does. So in effect, when I add hydroxides to this, they remove H pluses. They react with the H pluses to form water. And I shift left to replace those. Let's do it one more time. Once again, if I add an acid, it'll shift right because I'm adding excess acid. The stress will cause it to move away from the acid side and it should turn orange. So we'll add our hydrochloric acid and there we go, it goes orange again. And one more time, if I add a base, it will shift left to replace the, o, the H pluses that I'm removing, and it should turn yellow. So here we go. And we could do this all day. We could go back and forth between orange and yellow, shifting the equilibrium by placing a stress on the system. I hope that helps, folks. Have a good day.